Investment advisory services offered through Independent Solutions Wealth Management and Blackridge Asset Management LLC. Peak Broker Services LLC is not an affiliate of Independent Solutions or Financial Guys LLC. You're listening to the Financial Guys. We're twenty-three trillion dollars in debt, honey. We don't have an extra surplus of money. Newsflash, guys: stop attacking businesses because when all the businesses are gone, nobody's going to pay your salary anymore. You get that? If the goal is to create a loser mentality, well, you're winning. I'm going to build a right. big, beautiful wall with a big, beautiful door. Well, guess what? We have a big, beautiful door, all right. It's the <laughs> wide it's open southern border, right? Yeah. Here's Glenn Wiggle and Mike Lomas. All right, welcome back. Mike Lomas, Glenn Wiggle, Financial Guys, the place where money meets politics. And uh, appreciate you tuning in. Uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and our website, thefinancialguys.com, for any of your specific uh, financial information or if you just want to shoot us a question or a topic. Uh, Glenn, uh, you know, we uh, election fraud, economy, um, COVID, I don't even know where you want to start. You know, in Erie County, uh, they have now, uh, they're, uh, I guess it's a, he's got a coded now, Andrew Cuomo, from, you know, orange and yellow and red and uh it's amazing because he wrote a book which is all about him beating the covid in new york but now it's spiking again which i really don't understand because i talked about this on the radio on saturday uh where i live uh, most of the restaurants are actually closed they're actually gone uh so i like you know there's nothing left to sort of quote spread covid they've closed the in buffalo you can't go to a bills game can't go to a a, a, a concert can't go to a hockey game you yeah. can't uh, go out to a restaurant anymore uh, you can as long as you eat something and there's not more than four people and you wear a mask to get from a to b um, and if you want to get up and use the uh, restroom you've also got to like you know make a make sure you right. got a face shield on so i really don't understand what could possibly be spiking the cases now in Erie county i thought right. we, i thought we exactly. beat it number one number two yeah. we've all been on lockdown i don't understand it well he wrote the book mike he wrote, he the, wrote book. the book he, he, he had the whole solution he was he was pounding his chest and bragging how great he was yeah and look, here we are, Erie County now, what, 7 8% and spiking. And, of course, yeah. he, you know, the way he talks, he blames the municipalities. Like, you didn't do what you yeah. were supposed to yeah. do. You it's people. your fault. Yeah. You're now going to be punished. You people didn't follow. Meanwhile, his brother's out getting haircuts. He's out in the streets. Yeah. You know, well, uh, Schumer's out there with a bullhorn celebrating the, the supposed Biden win, which I'm still not convinced that. It's over, but we'll see what happens there. But the fact of the matter is, is that he has the worst track record in the country by far when it comes to COVID by far. Mm -hmm. Right. And yet here we are. And he's talking about doing more of the same, same failed thing. policies. That's right. That and that's what the they do. Time. Right. We all maybe know try Florida. That's a track record. Yeah. Maybe try Florida. By the way, Florida yeah. fatalities are down. Daily fatalities. Yeah. I was talking to Kelsey before we started here. And it's funny because this is out of the Tallahassee. So, you know, the papers down in Florida, you know, same dirtbag liberals. Right. Uh, just less of the dirtbag liberals down in Florida, but Tallahassee reports. So front page, it says November 16th, tracking Florida COVID-19 cases, hospitalizations and fatalities. So there's this big chart on, on yeah. the case count is up, right? Testing more. We know that, right? And then daily new Corona cases, again, seven day trend line. It's up. Oh my God, it's up. Yeah. It's up. It's up. But you know, the last part of this, which I, to me is the most important part, it says deaths, daily fatalities, seven day average. The trend line is actually down. Wait a minute. Wouldn't we start with that? Wouldn't we say? Yes. And, and by the way, it's Today, way down. Well, you'll see that switch shortly. It's it's as way as down. It, it's if way Biden down. actually does, if Biden actually does end up in the Oval Office, you watch how they change these headlines. Oh like, yeah. You should grab that headline right now, and then three months from now, show the side by side. Oh yeah. Where the headline 20. will be exactly that, Mike. It'll yeah. be look at the declining, yeah. you know, trend Definitely. line, and yeah. sadly. We've dumbed down America to a point where there are people out there that think because Biden was supposedly elected that suddenly we got these vaccines. Oh, yeah. They think that. That's right. They really think no, that. No, that's right. As if and, it wasn't Operation Warp Speed and that's it wasn't right. the, the, the push from – you know, the, the President Trump and the unleashing of American innovation and, you know, lowering the regulations to get that stuff done. Unbelievable. Yeah. No. Unreal. And if you look at daily fatalities, by the way, in in, the, in Florida, as an example, in uh, August, we were at around 200 and something. As of last week, we were at 41 for the day, 25 one day. Now, we all probably know, and I've been saying this for a long time, beating the drum, that probably only about 6% of them are actually COVID cases, right? So actually COVID right. deaths. Uh, out of the 41 deaths in Florida, many 
many of them died of other things, but just happened to have COVID down. Uh, even in Erie County, by the way, I mean, if you look at Erie County, we had 175 people in the hospital last week. Now, that's literally 0.019% of the population. Uh, now, 50% of it, this is Poland Carr saying this, he came out and said, 50% of these are younger people. They're getting together and partying. And okay, well, that's, they have 100%, basically 100% cure rate, right? Yeah. So, so now, if that's the case, if 50% of the 0.019% of the population is in the hospital is younger people, and they've pretty much got a 99.9% of survival, I think it's time to go back to normal. But again, this we can't do that. It can't do that until, until the until the Democrats have everything until it's January 20th, and and they absolutely yep. make sure they're holding on to this. By the way, just in case Trump was to pull the, these uh, victories out, right? If all of a sudden yep. voter fraud flipped it, they can go right back to saying, "Oh, shame on us." And, and even Dirtbag Andrew is holding out. He's holding New York hostage. I mean, Operation Warp yep. Speed was unbelievable, unbelievable yep. in putting yep. together and working with companies like Pfizer and Moderna to now have a vaccine that's 90 something percent um uh, uh, powerful or whatever. I don't know. The 94 percent curable, I guess you'd say. Right. Those are those are yep. awesome statistics. I remember Fauci saying, well, if we could get the 40 or 50 percent, we would be in really great shape. So, so he's talking about still using masks. Yeah. He came out yesterday yeah. and said, well, even with the vaccine and being 95 percent effective, we're still going to yeah, have to wear at masks. what point this guy is a nah. is a lunatic. Yeah, he needs to be checked into a mental hospital. There's I'm no sorry. doubt about that. There's, there's no something wrong with that. him. If at in, that in the same point, day, he did two interviews and yeah. it, one was like, oh, we're going into a dark one. It was like, hey, we're almost around the corner. Yeah. It's like he's like a Dejecko and high. Yeah. It was like two well, completely different people. Uh, and I, I know I, I continue to say that if there's one thing that the that the Trump administration really failed at, it was the messaging of COVID. Yeah. He should have been fired immediately. He should have been fired, fired, immediately. Day well. should have been fired yeah. immediately. And and what you do is you say nothing against him, but I want to bring in frontline COVID doctors. You bring in the Dr. Yeah. Erickson's, exactly. the folks the folks that were actually there. It's like, uh, you know, we have all know uh, the economic professor that never ran a business but thinks they know. Yeah. And, you know, they're, they're analyzing the cost of a widget when you really have to figure out what if Mary Beth and Sally actually don't show up for work, right? <laughs> that's not that's not in the textbook. And Dr. Fauci doesn't know what's in the textbook. He's not a frontline doctor. But shame on Trump. Shame on Trump. Should have fired the, the, the FBI. Should have been cleaned out of the FBI. That should have been all people that are high character yep, people. Exactly. There's enough high character people out there, spe specifically in the FBI, that he could have replaced that. Enough... Uh, frontline COVID doctors yep. that he could have assembled a team to be able to say, here's yep. what the CDC is actually saying. None of it happened. None of it happened. So, Well, know. if anything is a disappointment, it's, it's the not moving fast enough. But it's hard to blame. I mean, Trump focused on, on the positive, right? Mm -hmm. He focused on getting things done that, yeah. that were that were that were his campaign promises. You know, he worked. He focused on building the wall and getting some of that built. He focused on, you know, getting the new NAFTA agreement, which he successfully did. He focused on peace in the Middle East, which for the large part made more progress than the last six presidents combined right yeah. so he you know he did a lot of things that he said he would do tax cuts right he focused on getting the tax cuts in place so he was focusing on the positive all at the same time while the democrats were ha trying to hamstring him in every possible way yeah. and unfortunately he just he should have done he should have brought in a, a one of his high level managers from his business not Rand's previous remember Rand's previous was the first you know chief of staff or whatever in an inner circle he should never been there mm -hmm. he should have been one of his top managers one of his businesses or one of his sons, maybe Eric Jr., or maybe, or maybe Don Jr. or Eric. And then I think you go and you say, clean out the garbage, yep, right? That's right. And you let them go through and you let them fire thousands of people. Thousands. And that's what they really should have done. Yes. Thousands. I'm thousands. talking tens of thousands. You're gone. You're yep. gone. Bye-bye. See yep. you later. Yep. You're out. You Oh, look at your Facebook page. You're all about Hillary. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye-bye. Nice time. <laughs> oh, look at, but here's the good news. I'm going to get the unemployment rate down to below 4%. So you should be able to find a job in the private yeah. sector. Good luck with <laughs> that's that, right? right? That's what you should have done, there. but he didn't. Yeah. Plenty of opportunity out there. Plenty of opportunity out there. It, right? That's absolutely yeah, so. right. Uh, by the way, if you're just tuning in, Mike Lomas, Clown Wiggle, and this is a place where money meets politics. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and make sure you hit the bell if you're watching us on YouTube. We appreciate it. we got to get the conservative message out there, folks. Share us as much as possible. Our website, thefinancialguys.com, if you have any specific financial questions. We are an independent firm, so we have uh, like we, it's a one-stop financial shop. We have help with Medicare, independent certified Medicare reps. We have independent 
independent certified social security claiming strategists if you need to pick a social security option. We have auto and home. We can shop over 25 companies to save you money. So make sure you use our team as a resource, specifically if you think like us. You know, it's funny, during this election, Glenn, we've had a lot of haters that sort of uh, mix their way into our Facebook page and our Twitter accounts, and uh, they threaten us. I love that. We had a lady on Facebook the other day. She said, I, just so you know, uh, or she says, this is a firm out of Buffalo, New York. I have no idea where she is, that uh, is uh, talking all about this conservative message, and we should shame them. And we're laughing. We're like, okay, do us a favor. Share that as much as possible, because some uh, some of your friends may actually be conservative with a brain, and they're going to go, oh, I love that, right? We've already made it crystal clear that if you're a liberal, we're not interested in dealing with you. So, um, right. but it just you gotta so funny. that wall of shame. Yeah. So we gotta get a Facebook. We gotta get a. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll make a hashtag liberal wall of shame, and then what we're gonna do is we gotta get a. We gotta link it to our our, our uh, website, so we have a full page up there with picture and. Yeah. It's amazing. Like I would never in a million years, you know, drive by a business and see a Biden sign and call that business right. and say, how dare you? She actually called because of the socialist sign, the one lady. She said, yeah. if you don't take that socialist sign down, our sign blue said, you know, please vote you know, against socialism or something right. like that. Right? Yeah, please please, re- sign, please right? vote Republican. Stop socialism. Yeah. Stop socialism. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Okay. So, you know, so she's calling up saying, you know, I, if you don't take down your sign, I'm going to add you to our list. That's what she <laughs> our said, list. Right. <laughs> Could you imagine if we call them? Look, at, I even drive by businesses that have a Biden sign that I do business with. And I, st- I don't, you know, I should, but I don't. I still like if You know, if I like the people in there, I'll still do business with that place. I'm not sure. going to say I'm never coming in here. Certainly I'm not going to shame gonna them. Call, yeah. And sure. I'm not going to add them to a list. Like, no. how dare you? It, it's to shout. These people are fascists. It's the shouting down of other people's ideas. Yeah. And that is really the core of liberalism, right? They want to control everybody else's behavior That's they right. can't stand it all they just you know if they would just mind their own business but it's not about their own business right it's about everybody else's business yep. everybody else needs to wear a mask did you like how they turn that around yeah it's for everybody else's yeah. protection right, That's right. That's it's right. not for you you're selfish if you don't wear a mask because you're putting other people at risk see That's so right. i have to enforce your behavior right we're, we're, we're to a point where we're so far past people living their own lives and acting of their own free will and and i can arguably for the liberals, a lot of them, they've dumbed themselves down to a point where they can't make their own decisions. Right. They need someone to tell them what to do. Absolutely. They don't know if they should. These are the people that are out in the outdoors on a hiking trail wearing a mask because Governor Cuomo said. That's right. But they're the same people that, that claim that they're environmentalists, but they discard their mask on the ground on the trail, right? <laughs> That's right. It's That's unbelievable. Right. The same exact really people, is. by so the, the way, hypocrisy. that have never yeah. taken a dollar out of their pocket and planted a tree anywhere. Never, right? Yeah. I laugh. I drive uh, around our office. We've got Erie Community College, and they have basically cleared out every tree on the ECC yep. campus, right? Yeah. And I'm thinking yeah. to myself, isn't there one liberal professor here that steps up and says, "Hey, let's plant no. a few trees," right? As a no. as a as a as a team building thing or whatever, right? Let's go yeah. out and build a few. Not one. You know who you know who end up planting those trees? Me, because I'll be sick and tired of running around seeing them. So I'll just hire some people and plant the trees for them, right? Disgusting. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the economy, Glenn. There was an article the other day. Um, rec- Record low employment in Buffalo Niagara region. We are 46,000 jobs <laughs> away from where we were at September of last year, right? That is nice. that is remarkable when you really put that into context, when you think about Erie County, who is in desperate need of, of growth, right? I mean, we have been continuing to shrink for years. Part of Erie County, most of Erie County's uh, lack of success has not necessarily been Erie County. It's been New York State and the leadership of, of dirtbags like Andrew Cuomo. And I'll continue to call him a dirtbag, by the way. As somebody said last week, you gotta, you guys got to stop calling him a dirtbag. I'll stop calling him a dirtbag when he stops being a dirtbag. He's a dirtbag. So, um, <laughs> a dirt yeah. Bag. So record low employment, not unemployment, employment in the Buffalo and Ag region, 46,000 jobs in September compared to a year earlier. Now, you've got – I want you to think about this, folks. Why is that? Well, we had uh, the most repressive lockdowns. In the country, right? And uh, we literally smashed restaurants. If you look at, by the way, if you look at Florida, and I'm using Florida as an example because we have offices down there, Florida did the mask thing, uh, but the governor was smart enough to go back to 100% capacity as fast as possible, right? I think there was a two week lag or a three week lag where, you know, we weren't exactly sure in the beginning what the numbers were going to be. We were told millions of people were going to die. It's not even close. We all know that. We've been through it. Um, but the governor down 
there had a brain in his head and he said, look at, in fact, he took away the mask mandate. He sort of pushed it on the counties and said, uh, I'll push it on the business owners. If you feel comfortable or you want to wear masks, you do it. If you don't, you don't. But at least everything was at 100% capacity. You know, I noticed yeah. in Buffalo, when you look at some of these uh, using restaurants as an example, because they've been hit the hardest or gyms, you know, when you're telling a business, well, you can only have 25% or 40% or, you know, know people just say why bother you know we and actually yeah. you know we tried to help out quite a bit my wife and i would say all right look at let's take the kids out to dinner just to try to get some of these places to survive and then we'd show up and it was a three-hour wait and it wasn't a three-hour wait because they didn't have space it was a three-hour wait because they were at 25 percent capacity right um right. not going to survive in that in that environment and now we see the numbers down forty-six thousand jobs year to year yeah. I, I don't think it's ever going to come back certainly new york state oh. as a whole is just a total mess the <laughs> The the, uh, the the leadership doesn't want to change. They don't care. They continue to look at the, quote, science and look the other way from it now. But now you've got Joe Biden that wants to lock the economy, the country down for four to six weeks. I mean, talk about turning the rest of the country into Erie County and New York right. State. And that's exactly what he wants right. to do. That's sad. Well, I wonder what states like, like you know, governors like uh, DeSantis would do in Florida. You know, that, that's the big question. Yeah, you know? not, listen. We now have, not listen. We now have, yeah, I would hope so, right? Yeah. We now have free states and non-free states, right? Except yep. This time it's reversed. It's the north that have no free states. It's the south that are the free states. And yeah. it's the truth, right? You can't – these people revel in the fact that they can control your life. They really do. Yep. And when you hear them talk about how many businesses they were able to close or how or shut down. Yeah, or, they're proud of it. Or, or, or take it. their liquor license. Yep. They're, they're happy about it. Yep. Yeah. And not, not, not one story, by the way, and you've been saying this for weeks, but not one story from any of them about opening. It's all constantly about closing. It's all negative. And when they, they do spent- open. When they do open a little bit, the story then spins to if you don't give, you get out of line even a little bit, we're going back to closing. There's That's no right. like, okay, hey, look at we have to phase this in one, two, three, four. Now there was using DeSantis as a he right away, right away months ago said, okay, look at we're going to do this in phases, but we're going to do this fast. It's going to go one, two, three, four, yeah. and we're going to push this as fast as possible. And then once we open, he said, we're not going backwards. I looked at the data, I've seen the numbers, I've seen how yeah. awful New York State has done with their lockdown. I've seen what happens and in Sweden that, that has opened up and, I, and I've, I've looked at all the countries that have had the most severe uh, lockdowns, the harshest of lockdowns. They ended up the worst. I'm not going backwards, right? But just yeah, the opposite in the communist state of New York. He gets it. Yeah. No doubt. Well, you know, this is the larger thing. I mean, it goes to Obama's. You didn't build that. If yeah. you got a business, uh, you didn't make that happen. <laughs> right. To versus Ronald Reagan, yep. who really understood and appreciated small business owners, who yep. really, you know, understood that small businesses and, and entrepreneurship was the backbone of this country and and versus the Obama of, of, of the world, right? Yep. You just think that, you know, if you got a business, you were just lucky. You know, you were somehow, you fell into it. You know, yeah. it had nothing to do with working six to seven days a week. It had nothing to do with mortgaging your house and taking risk. It had nothing to do with just simply out working and out hustling or, or, or out thinking, you know, with better ideas, uh, somebody else. Yep. No, no, no. No, somehow you just got lucky, right? You, you don't deserve somebody else. You need to share that. They're talking about that now, by the way, folks. They're, they're now out in the open about this new world order global reset yep. that, you know, up until recently was the idea of right wing conspiracy theorists. And now suddenly you've got people like de Blasio talking about it openly, uh, uh, the uh, Prime Minister Trudeau in Canada, flat out said it, a, yeah. a Lori Lightfoot in Chicago. Like this is a, a golden opportunity for us to, to set this massive reset, yep. which is a reset is just a redistribution of wealth, except they don't want, just want to do it within our country. They want to do it on a global scale. global scale. How would you feel about that, folks? They take your hard-earned money yeah. and give it to a, a you know somebody who is in yeah. a war tribe in Uganda. That's right. You know that uh, seriously. You no, know, that's right. To be, to be rude or or, or, or uh, no, no, no. You know, racist a... or don't call me that. But you know the reality of it is that you have warring tribes, literally, in in, in places like Africa. You yeah. have warring factions undeveloped in, in yep. places like Afghanistan. Yep. Like they, I mean. To yeah. be honest with you, like get yourself together, right? We spent billions of dollars already trying to help these trillions. countries. The last thing I want, trillions, is my tax dollars to go up even higher. And sadly, you know, it's funny because people like the UN uh, administrators and bureaucrats, they seem to all be making a, you know, millions of dollars a year. They're, uh, they're shipping champagne 
while while people are, are not getting you know think, so think about dollars this, that they take of ours, probably ten cents actually goes where it's supposed to go. I would guess yeah, if that. I mentioned this on Saturday, and this is really why anybody with a brain in their head should be truly disgusted. When you look at the economic numbers in the state of New York, and you look at the economic numbers in Erie <laughs> County, as an example, down forty six thousand jobs. We have folks like Mark Polenkars that have given themselves a raise. We have people like yeah, exactly. Andrew Cuomo that have given themselves a raise. They're not redistributing their wealth, folks. They're lining yeah. their pockets. And exactly. for those of you who say, well, Mark's doing a good job. You know what? So did all the restaurant owners. They did a great job, too. Yeah. Guess what? They've lost everything, right? I'd have, a, I'd have a way more respect. I might not agree with them, but if Mark handled everything the exact same way he did, but he said, you know what? I understand what these restaurants owners are going through. I'm going to donate 100% of my paycheck to 100%, yeah. by the way, not, not like 10%. Not 10% or 5%, 100% of my paycheck, and I'm going to struggle with you. If I'm going to shut down your businesses, if Andrew Cuomo said I'm going to take 100% of my paycheck and I'm going to give it back to this restaurant foundation, it's not going to fix everything, but it shows you I'm on the same page with you. These dirtbags gave themselves a raise, folks. They, they did. They gave themselves a raise. Thing. Are you not getting Isn't that it? that amazing? Yes. That's hard to believe. I mean, yes. That really is hard to believe that these guys are so arrogant that they give themselves a raise. I'd be sick. During Glenn. the time when sick. people are getting, you know, That'd be losing sick. their businesses. And they plan the whole, you're right, Mike, they, they spend all kinds of time and effort figuring out what they're going to do when they shut things down. That's right. But they spent no time on talking about how to get things open. Not, there not, was a, that, not a bit. See that with the school district, right? There was no thought about how can we get the school districts open in a, in a reasonable way. None whatsoever, not, no, right? No, no still but, not. But they thought all about how they were going to close them. Months they later. All kinds months of times later. figuring out yellow, red, That's right? right? Months later. That's right. right. Months, months later. Months, months later, later. There's no discussion on when we're going back full-time without the mask. It's all about yeah. how can we shut down? How? What What color do we need to shut down? It's really sad. Yeah. At de Blasio, by the way, and to your point, de Blasio was one of the first ones. We remember playing the clip on radio and on our podcast, him talking about how they were going to use this crisis to change things. We can't go back the way it was. This is a great opportunity to really change the fabric of New York City. Now he did that, and, and he did what all what socialism always does, what left-wing liberalism always does. It's a mental illness, folks. It destroys everything it touches. Maybe not right away, but eventually. And now they've destroyed New York City. They've destroyed San Francisco. It's spreading. You know, that, that was their goal. Now, uh, there's some positives, by the way. Uh, and I go back to economics in a little bit here, but but just to go back to the election, um, you know, every House seat that was flipped, every one of them was a GOP, a minority, a, or a woman, or a veteran, which I thought was pretty cool. That's yeah. sort of telling yeah. about. Now, the other thing is the Republicans now control more states than ever before in U.S. history, right? So there yeah. is some positives to what happened here. We know they stole the election on a presidential basis, right? All those ballots come in. They're only marked for Biden. Come on. Nobody thought it through yeah. and voted for one other person. We know they stole well, that. I will say, though, I think the fabric, and I think you're going to see this continued push, the fabric is changing, folks. The Republican the Republican Party, the conservatives, are now not white old men. They are minorities. Yeah. They are, are the women. They, yeah, they absolutely yeah. are. And nothing, nothing. And it's not the Republican Party, by the way. It's the Trump Party. Trump Let's Party. Let's be clear about yeah, this. Yeah, that's right. This is Trump's party now. Seriously, yeah, right? I agree. The Republicans, for 50 years, did very little to attract any more than 2% of the black vote. That's right. right. That's they didn't right. do anything to expand their vote among the Latino community. They didn't do anything to expand, you know, into really the women or, I mean, I guess women, they were, did a pretty good job, but yeah. I'll, I'll take that back. But, yeah. but this new party, this, this party of Trump, I think really transcends Republicans and Democrats. Yep. It is a very inclusive party. Yep. Trump has always been a very inclusive guy. Despite the all the attacks of misogyny and racist and homophobia, you know, he was the first to say with his Trump Towers before he was really even a candidate. Yeah, you know, I don't care what Batsy is. Yeah. Do your thing, man. Yeah. Do your thing, right? Right. I'm not because again, it's not a, a conservative position or a republic or a right side of position to tell other people how to live their life. You yep. want to dress an address, go for it, right? That's right. Just don't tell me that I have to use what you know, whatever. Just yeah. do your thing, right? Well, well think Trump about this. Trump was the first one to say, "I'll put a, a gender neutral bathroom. There. It's called the family restroom. Both people use it. No big deal. It's already there. Go for it, right?" Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's the one who gets beat up about it. That's why I think we've expanded more 
you know, you saw the, the minority vote, the highest uh, uh, percentage of minority vote for a Republican candidate in 60 years. Yeah. That's and, substantial. And talk about doing something for the black community, specifically or the yeah. inner city community, was these opportunity zones. Ultimately, yep. absolutely the way you stimulate economic growth, which is you make and you give people a financial incentive to invest in oh. these communities. Billions of dollars moving into these communities, right? Billions yeah. of dollars. I can't think of a better opportunity opportunity, by the way, especially as the economy is now shifting, right? Where there's no secret retail is dying. It's going to continue to die, but there's going to be this demand for warehouse space, right? Nothing yeah. better than taking a place like the east side of Buffalo and saying, okay, look at if you invest and you build out this warehouse and you take this garbage property and turn it into something great. Uh, and by the way, employ the people that are right around there. Why would you not, right? That's who's going to have the, uh, the ultimate opportunity is the people that live in those communities um let's let's infuse some cash absolutely working the other thing trump did and you, yep. you alluded to this it didn't matter what color you were it didn't matter whether you were a woman or a male he treated everybody equally and that absolutely draw that drove the democrat party crazy um yeah. and, and look at and andrew cuomo is still play he's going to always play this race crap right he's doing it with this yeah. covid now so i'm going to hold the vaccine back only because i don't think you're going to distribute it fairly OK, what Andrew Cuomo is saying yeah. is if you're black, you're not capable of going eight miles away from your house and getting a shot yeah. somewhere. That's what he's saying. And if I have yeah. been saying forever, if I was a black male instead of a white male, I would be so pissed off right now. Yeah. So what do you mean I can't yeah. get in a car and drive? It's eight so miles and get it, right. So what do you mean I can't? Right, so, so just because I'm black, I can't go to CVS and get a shot. Yeah, that's what he's saying. You're not capable yeah. of it. You need Andrew yeah. Cuomo and his merry band of brothers to to come in specifically into your street because you're not capable of finding out where the shot is at CVS six miles from your house. That's what he's saying, right? You know what Donald Trump is saying? I don't give a crap. I don't give a crap whether you're black or white. Go eight miles and get the shot. And you know what many black people are saying? Thank you for treating me normal. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I can go eight miles exactly. and get a shot, right? I can figure out yeah. where my voter ID is and vote. I don't need Andrew Cuomo to tell me that, right? It's starting to shift, which I will say, if there's a positive out of all this, it's Trump has changed, and you pointed out that the Republican Party is now a Trump party. He has changed the dynamics, and, and that's a huge deal, right? A huge deal. Yeah. Well, it's always about governing to the lowest common denominator, and that's a lack of leadership and a lack of intelligence. Yes. i, I got to be honest. And yep. Governor Cuomo is both. He lacks the intelligence and he lacks the leadership skills to actually make a decision. Yep. We saw that with the 25, 50, 75% closure. In one, two, three days in a row, he couldn't make a decision. Yep. But it's the same thing when it comes to, and I used this example on the other day, it's like if you had 100 people and they're all sick, but we only had 99 doses of a treatment. What Governor Cuomo would say, and that's what he's saying here with this vaccine is, if they all can't get it, then nobody, nobody gets, gets it, it. Right? right? If we can't administer it equally to everybody, the rural and the urban areas, then nobody's going to get it. And that's stupid, right? Yeah. Instead of saying, okay, let's see here. Now, how do we solve this problem? We got 99 doses and we got 100 people. I can think of a lot of ways to solve that problem. Yeah. Number one. Who's the least sick? How healthy are you in general? Are you strong enough to fight this off on your own? Yeah. Maybe you don't get the dose. We help the other 99. How about this? How about we take the 99% and we talk about it and we take those 99 doses and we average them out. So we take a little bit from each and we get 10% from each. And then we add that and we make one more dose. That would, that would work, right? We could just, theoretically, we could take 1% from each dose and make up enough to make that 10, that 100th yep. dose, right? So there's a lot of scenarios that you can come up with that you can, you can solve for that, right? You can maybe take one dose and split it in two and say we got two really healthy people that are not that sick, yeah. right? There's all kinds of options that you can consider, analyze, think about. And then make a decision as to what the best decision is. But you make and then the you decision. Stick by it, right? You make the decision. You make a decision. You, you don't it may not be the right decision. Oh, crap. Those two people died. Yeah. I guess that was my decision. But we saved the other 98. Yeah. I did the best I could. He's out there this week, Mike, saying, well, you got to face up when you make an error. But I didn't make any errors. I <laughs> I know. Like, it's like he, how, it's, 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 the, it's the gaslighting is insane. It's a, really as a parallel universe yeah. these people live in. It, it's almost like they're all mentally ill. Yeah. That somehow, and the sad thing is a lot of people believe it. Yeah, you know, so it's the same people that believe that Biden came up with these, you know, now that he's supposedly elected, came up with these, uh, 
these cares. Well, it's the, the dumbing way, down of America. So sure. right? a- a- ABC, yeah, the NBC America. is running the country right now. And there's yeah. half of the country or, well, uh, let's say 25 percent of this country that does the research. We've been saying this for years. Look, at, just because you listen to a podcast like us doesn't mean, OK, well, you listen to a podcast like us, you know everything. No, but you're getting involved. You're trying to spend your time wisely to educate yourself on what is actually happening out there. There's about 25 yeah. to 40 percent of this country that does none of that. They, they do whatever they do during the day. They go home and watch The Voice. They go to sleep. They get up in the morning, and they, and they catch the ABC or the NBC News in the morning full of dirtbags. Yeah. They're not going to tell you anything, right? They're going to leave the Hunter Biden story off the table. They're not going to tell you about the Biden crime family. They're just going to tell you about how great of a Joe, uh, guy Joe is and how Trump's a dirtbag and, and he's a racist and blah, 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 right? Uh, they asked him five questions, Biden. Four about Trump. Yeah. That's what. Yeah. So now we get the softballs. Like they beat up President Trump every day with nastiness. This yeah. Media is well, they'll still be nasty. beating them up. They'll still be beating them up. Yeah. For yeah, the next four they years. Just throw softballs to Joe. Joe for the what next do you think four about years. Trump? That's right. For the next four years, every question to <laughs> Joe will be how, how are you handling all the mistakes from the Trump administration, right? How's that right. going, right? Uh, to your well, point, by the way, of, of Cuomo not, sure. not making a decision, his ventilator one was the best, right? I mean, so we're yeah, not yeah. going to give ventilators out because you have none? No, because we think we might need more later. But don't you need them now? Couldn't you just reuse yeah. them? Oh, well, right. yeah. But again, they don't call them out on it. Right. Uh, looking back at the economy, by the way, and we We've been getting a lot of calls about, you know, what if Biden does win? What if this Trump, the lawsuits don't go through? Do I sell all my stocks? Um, you've got to be really careful about that, folks. You know, uh, we've been saying this mental yeah. illness called liberalism takes time to soak into an economy. And, Glenn, you did a yeah. lot of research about the Community Reinvestment Act when we were going through the subprime yeah. mortgage market and the crisis. And, and that took decades to, we, you know, to push itself through the, uh, through the economy. But, you know, this actually reminds me a lot of Congress. Carter, Clinton, Obama, Biden. And what I mean by that is now I'm hearing Biden already going back to, I'm going to beef up Obamacare. So what these liberals do is when one of them gets into office, i.e. Jimmy Carter, they throw this stuff out there. And then later on, when one of these liberals gets back into office, they sort of unpackage it again. And that's what they're going to try to do with Obamacare, right? They're going to try to unpackage it. They're going to try to cram it with all this stuff. I've already heard him talking about Medicare for people that are 60 plus instead of 65 plus. So They'll add on to this, and then you know at some point the conservatives will get back in. They'll take away some of it, but not all of it. We've got, uh, you know, we've been yep. calling them Democrat light forever. So, so look, yep. Obamacare will not blow up when Biden gets into office on January 21st or 20th, if that's the what what ends up being the case. It's not going to blow up in 22 or 23. It's going to blow up in 33. It's going to blow up in 43. That's when it'll blow up. We'll hand that mess to yep. our kids' kids. You know, they'll just keep adding on to the debt. The debt doesn't matter until it matters, and it'll blow up at some point in the future, right? Um, yeah. So well, the market's rallying because of the government money. I think you know the market's no are rallying right now because it's thinking record amount of cash on the sideline. Yeah, record amount of cash money from sideline. government, right? They're yep. thinking that they're gonna, you know, now that we got a potentially a Biden, you know, with the, with the Congress, the Republicans of the, the Senate will be forced to pass some stimulus, and that's yep. gonna be free money. They're floating the idea of shutting down the, the economy for six weeks and just paying people to stay home. <laughs> that's people unreal. Have, you Here's the thing. These idiots, and they are idiots, let's yeah. be honest here. Yes. They have no understanding of supply chains or economics no. whatsoever, None. right? No. They have no understanding. None. A grocery store does not have capacity to hold six weeks worth of food <laughs> right. so they can stock up not. and, well, wait until everyone gets their check. And not a clue. They have no idea. You want to see lines go for miles not a clue. And, and food run out? Not you a clue. are setting yourselves up for bread lines and soup lines, a la 1933 or the 1930s in Germany when they had wild inflation, yeah. right? Yep. That's what you're setting up for. These people, though, on the left, they have no, they are economically illiterate. Right. They have no understanding of how things actually work in this country. I, I've been, and I got to be honest, I don't think people are going to go through it. One no. more thing quick on the election, though, we can go back to the thing. And no. I don't, you know, Sidney Powell yesterday, she's a pretty respectable attorney. She yeah. came out and said they've got the evidence. They yeah. have got. Oh, they the better get moving to get it out there. Votes were switched. Yeah, they've got about two weeks before the they start to certify stuff. That's so right. That's right. I still have a glimmer of hope that Trump is going to flip this. If anything would happen in twenty twenty, crazy, that would be it, right? Yeah, there was a. But at this point, the, the cities will burn because thanks to the Democrats and thanks to the uh, yeah, they've already uh, called thanks it. Thanks to the uh, the yeah. media. They've already called it. Yeah. And, and by the oh. way, what happened with the million mega march and the fact that the media's not covering, you, the Civil War has started, folks. Yep. And I got to tell you, conservatives have had enough. 
enough. I hope right? so. I you're hope start so. Seeing I, certainly, nobody wants to see that. But I, I hope I you're right that, about the conservatives have had enough. I hope you're right about that because they've been pushed to the edge time and time again. Right? How many times have you heard, boy, if, if uh, Biden wins, the Trump supporters are going to riot? Give me a break. Yeah. Right? Well, they you've haven't got, rioted yet, but you've I got, got to tell you, we're getting pretty. Angry. You've got Biden supporters that for the last uh, year, uh, if not two years, have literally burned down and smashed community yep. after community after community. And now you've got Joe going, let's get together and heal. Let's get together. Yeah. It's my job to bring everybody together. No job. You no, know, Joe, your job was to do that two years ago before they started burning everything down, right? You yeah, and well, Obama, that's right. you and your supporters could have very easily said, this is not the way to handle things. Instead, yep, you, and, you and your buddies like de Blasio flesh. said, well, I'm proud of my daughter for smashing things. I don't know. That's right. Sounds good. I'll fan the flames. Yeah, I'll fan the flames. By the, the way, sad thing, like, is that the liberals are so dumb, they don't understand that these people come for them too, right? So they threw a, a big firework into a restaurant, right? Yeah. And, and uh, how how do they know that people there aren't, like, Biden supporters? Like, they That's don't right. know, right? That's right. So you're sitting in a restaurant. You're a Biden supporter. They don't care what they They don't care what they They ruin. attack whoever. Yeah. They don't care. That's I right. I can tell you, though. If I'm in that restaurant oh, yeah. and you start throwing fireworks or incendiary devices in my way, I'm coming back I take out. that as a threat. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to probably just yeah. shoot you. That's right. I'm not even going to leave my table. I'm probably just going to shoot you right where I'm sitting. As, it's just going to be the end of it right as there. You and I'll, face the, I'll face the jury. As you, you, know, you start throwing explosive devices in my direction, that's a threat to my life and my family's yep. life, whether it's a, a great bodily injury from my injuries or, or burn marks or whatever, or potential death. Yep. And I take that very seriously. So. Yep. I think that's where we have to go in this country, and I hate to say that. I, I don't want to go there because I think it's bad, but I think that's where we're going, and I think that uh, we're going there because of the Democrats and because of the, the liberal left and the fact that the media doesn't call them out. Yep. And, the, and the prosecutors aren't prosecuting, right? No. They go them right back out on the street. The prosecutors that's aren't not. prosecuting. The, the judges aren't doing garbage, right? No. You've still got a whole front line of judges out there, liberal judges. We have a lawsuit against Andrew Cuomo. They haven't even looked at it yet. They haven't looked at it yet. It's no. been a month. It was about a month. Two months? Yeah. I mean, you mean to tell me that this is such an important thing. And even the judge in the beginning said, I understand how important this is. I'm going to try to push it through. Right. And so he set it on his desk and pushed it aside. And he'll push it aside as long as he possibly can until hopefully some of this stuff will go bye-bye. The, the uh, vaccine will come out. And he can say, well, did his best. Right? D disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Um, so uh, uh, we're going all over the place here. By the way, if you just tell me, yeah. Mike Lomas, Come Legal Financial Guys, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Um, make sure you hit the bell uh, if you're watching on YouTube. We really appreciate that. Got to get that conservative message out there. And our website, thefinancialguys.com. You know, when it comes to COVID, Glenn, and the, the economy, I was talking Saturday on the radio show. I said, I compare it to an alcoholic. <laughs> and and, and he looks like, what? Yeah. I said, well, if you look at an alcoholic, right, in the beginning, they have drinks and they, they drink and they like, uh, you know, uh, uh, alcohol. And then there's some point where you start to get dependent on it, right? And then what happens yeah. is you have to wake up in the morning. Morning. And this is how government spending is with these liberals, right? In the beginning, it's like, yeah, we'll take a little bit, we'll do some, we'll do a little bit of this. But then, at the, uh, but then, uh, you wake up in the morning, you're dependent on it. You have to have yeah. it, right? Well, that's yep. how they are now, right? You have to have it, and which is all fine, right? What happens with an alcoholic is they wake up in the morning, they have a beer, and their system is right back. They're okay, right? Yeah. But at some point, it catches up to you. At some point, all that debt, all those yep. morning drinks, catch up to you, and eventually, your liver yeah. says, you know what, boy, those. <laughs> Those morning drinks were really good, but uh-uh, it's not going to make it anymore, right? And I feel like that's where we are with COVID. Like, these Democrats wake up and they go, well, we'll just throw some more money at it. We'll just throw some more money at it. No problem, right? Yeah, just wake up in the morning, have a Miller Light. You'll be fine. And throughout the day, if you need another one, have another one, right? Just throw more debt at it. Just throw more debt. And by the way, in the economy, in the short term, we are absolutely at the spot where we're getting that morning beer. We're getting that money. Yeah, right? oh yeah. So you yep. look at the economy and you go, wow, man, everything's good. The stock market's good. Everything's great, right? Um, you know, you, again, you got the morning beer. You got the morning beer. At yep. some point, it's going to catch up to us. And by the way, don't go out and sell your stocks tomorrow. The morning beers are good. These people, are, the cash is on the sidelines, <laughs> right? Everything's fine. You can still operate. You can still function. But sometimes it takes a person 20 years for that to catch up, 30 years, right? In our economy, it's probably going to be a longer transition. At some point, the liver of America, the liver of society will fail. And it's going to be, ah. it's going to be a mess. It's going to be a ah, global my liver. 
re it's going to be a, it's going to be a global rebalance of this debt. And for those people that say debt doesn't matter, debt doesn't matter, it absolutely does. At some point, we either need conservative leadership to right the ship, right? Conservative conservative leadership to step up and say, look it. I know you like your morning beer. I know you like your afternoon wine, and I know you like to go into the night ha having fun, but. If we change this now, if we start to bring you back, you'll be okay in the long term. But if we don't, eventually your liver is going to die out. And and so at some point, you know, and we've talked about this, a lot of people believe that this is a strategy, right? Bankrupt the world and start over. Yeah. And it could be. That's what they want. The Claude Piven strategy. That's what they right? want. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they want, right? They yeah. want to just tear it down and say, well, you know what? We just got to get rid of all this money and take yeah. everything you say. And we're just going to set that's everything. Right. I mean, it, Kamala Harris did the best video. She just nailed it, right? She said, well, some people start out further behind than other people. And so that's just not right. No. Everyone's got to start out at the same point. That's so right. What does that mean? So that means, well, we're going to take money from those that have earned it, right? So let's say that's you have right. a million dollars and your neighbor has 100000 saved up. Right. Are you now going to take 500000 or $450,000 from your neighbor yeah. and give it to your uh, give it to the other neighbors so they both have, you know, 550 What, what about the fact that we did a study years ago, remember? It was like the top 20 wealthiest clients, and I think 18 of them didn't, uh, didn't grew up in poor families. <laughs> 18 right. out of the 20 right. grew up in poor exactly. families. So, oh, that's the thing. so that's, how does that that's, happen? That's, how far back do you go to start things well, over that's again? One of the right? great things about America. America, right, yeah. is you have the opportunity for economic mobility more so than any other country in the world. And yeah. so to put that video out, if that's her belief and her viewpoint, number one, it's completely wrong. It's completely ignorant, right? It's absolutely false, yeah. right? But that's what liberals will work off. They work off of false narratives and then they build off them, right? Hands up, don't shoot. Systematic racism in police departments, right? The, the, the targeting of, of unarmed African Americans. These are all false narratives. None of these right. things are true, right? right? But yep. yet they have built off of them. They have the Black Lives Matter has built a billion plus dollar war chest off of a completely false and fake narrative yep. that that there that more unarmed black people die in this country than anybody else. It's not true. Not true. It's not true, not right? True. But yet they, they have built an entire movement. They commit and, more and crimes. A billion plus dollar war chest they, based off of the false narrative. Black That's black true. males create more uh, do do uh, do more crimes than than white males do as a percentage of the overall population. But they don't get killed more by police officers. That's for sure. Uh, all right, let's wrap this up. You know, just a few a food for thought here as we wrap up. Um, it is Thanksgiving coming up uh, just know that yeah. if you're in New York you're not allowed to have more than 10 people now in your house yeah, so but they will uh, like the California governor so, he's great isn't he oh, he's, yeah. out with, he's out with lobbyists he's telling you you can't have more than 10 people in your house yeah. but he's out with lobbyists Lighthouse the same way do you see that that uh, champion Unreal. she's by the way she's screaming into a microphone without a mask right like screaming yes. into a microphone a th th thousands of people there doesn't seem to be a problem but if you want to have yeah. grandma and grandpa and you know 11 family yeah. members over your house you're not yeah. Being told. They are, their neighbors are telling them. By the way, they're telling people in New York to turn in their neighbors. No mark, joke. Folks. Mark my words, by the way, because I, I I said the mass will cause more COVID than it stops. I, I still believe that. Yeah. We're going to continue to see studies after study of people because here's why. Let me explain it to you well, real quickly again. Uh, first of all, it's not healthy. Your immune system's getting crushed. The second thing is you stop at a Starbucks, you grab your coffee that's got the COVID on it, and then you grab your mask and you touch your mask and you make sure that you really breathe that COVID in, right? So the next thing we'll find out, by the way, mark my words, is that by ending things like Bills games and Sabres games and, and concerts, what you're having is more house parties now. People didn't stop gathering together. They're just saying, you know what, instead of going to the Bills game, I use me as an example. When I go to the Bills game, I'm usually going with my daughter, Olivia, right? Well, it's just her and I. We tailgate before. We might, you know, have, uh, I will bring hot chocolate or whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll just stop at Subway, whatever. It's usually just her and I. Then we go into this big stadium, and never once do I remember spitting on any of my neighbors or anything. But it's usually a really <laughs> open space, right? I mean, New Era Field's a pretty it's open outdoor space. Stadium. Yeah, it's, it's an like outdoor it's stadium. Door. And it's her and I giving each other high fives, and hopefully as they score, right? Or being disappointed as a Bills fan and leaving early, right? But now what, what people are doing is instead of going there, they're saying, you know what? Why don't I invite 20 of my friends over and have a party at my house? So now you've got 20 people right. congested in a house watching the Bills game exactly. together. These people yep. just have no 
common sense. Zero right. common Man, sense. No Zero idea. common sense. They, well, they think that you're going to – but the sad thing is people actually are listening. I heard I was, I was talking to somebody recently, and they have family in New York. They're not in New York, and they were saying to me they're, they live in Florida. And they were saying, yeah, my, my cousin can't get together with their brother-in-law. Like, you know, whatever, <laughs> imagine that? Because, Could you imagine I'm that? Like, what, I'm like, what, what? I'm sorry, what was that? Go, well, the rules of New York. I'm like, the rules of New York? Right. Why do you care about the rules of New York? Why would you listen to that? That's right. But they're like, well, you know, the people do. People yeah. are like they're just people in general are are rule followers. Right? They want to, like I said, they want to be told what to do. Yep. Right. And and they're and they're going to be just uh, even the conservatives have to have the people in life. Right. I always say this is a, a good partner of ours, uh, Brian Breisinger. And I made a whole poster out of this. What Kelsey made the poster really. I give him the idea, but she did a great job with it. We call it the Breisinger Matrix of Life. Right. There are three types of people he says in this life, and only three. I believe this. But the people that make it happen, the people that want uh, to make excuses why it doesn't happen, and the people that wonder what the hell just happened. Yep. And I made it into a pyramid because certainly, by and large, the majority of people are at the bottom. It's the biggest, the base of the pyramid is the majority of people in this world. And they're just going along. Yep. You know, they go to their office nine to five. They go back home. They're told what to do. If the governor says put a mask on, they put a mask on. If the governor says hop on one foot, rub your head, and, 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 uh, and pat your belly, they would do it. Yep. Right? They would do it. They would stand there. If the governor said, put a tinfoil hat on your head and cluck like a chicken, because yep. that's going to get yep. rid of COVID, there would be mass people yep. in the streets with tinfoil on their head clucking like chickens. And if I other people did it, well, even more so, right? Boy, the more, that's the more, right. the merrier, right? I don't yep. want to fight with anybody. I just wear the mask. Okay. It's the power of suggestion. There was yep. a great video that uh, that Prudential put out years ago that was done by like a, a hidden camera thing in the, in the 70s. And the power of suggestion and just screwing with people and elevators and things like that and watching how people just yep. want to conform. People yep. want to conform. By, by the way, the, that's a dangerous scenario. It is a dangerous scenario. And, and, you know, the hope is is that at some point enough people get a brain and start taking these masks off and the herd mentality follows them. But we'll see. I certainly think in New York, New York is a total mess. Uh, for those of you who are watching down in states like Florida, uh, continue to buy your real estate. It'll continue to appreciate over time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. For, for those, of, yeah. Uh, by the way, and uh, we, it was funny because I was talking about um, somebody asked me the other day. Said, "Mike, you know, if New York's so bad, why are places like Buffalo having success with the real estate market?" And I said, "Well, you should listen to the show more because Glenn and I actually talked about that months ago. We said there will be pockets of success in New York. There will be people leaving the city and and moving back to where their roots." are right there they know where their, their families in buffalo are gonna, so the city is a total disaster i think there's now up to something like fifteen thousand vacant apartment buildings rents are going down certainly when it comes to real estate whether it's a commercial or residential now in the city it's a mess but there'll be some there'll be some pockets of victory in the state right it'll be more expensive taxes are going to go up uh, but uh, property values will probably eventually decline or stay even and and you know as, as everybody else in the country uh a pre, you know gets uh, benefits from the, the, the appreciated real estate, but there'll be pockets of success, whether it's Buffalo or Syracuse or some of these small town, Rochester maybe, uh, but the overall state will continue to decline and continue to be a mess, and that's a, that's a real shame. All right. Uh, yeah, go, well, you're going to see these You're going to see these urban cores, I think, is hollow out. Oh, yeah. You're going to see places like Chicago, downtown Buffalo, which was seeing a massive resurgence. You're going to see them. If they don't get this violence under control, yep. you're going to see a, a, the, the hollow right out. Nobody right. wants to put up with that. No. Nobody wants to take their family down to dinner with the threat of somebody throwing an explosive device, you no. know, incendiary device in between the no. tables with yep. the family. Yep. That's yeah. just not cool. That's right. So. That's right. And unfortunately, the leadership there is not the uh, Rudy Giuliani no. leadership that says, you know what, we're going to end this pretty quick and put some uh, some of America's right. finest on the on the streets. They're uh, they're doing just the opposite. They're saying it's uh, yep. it's your fault exactly. for trying to have a nice peaceful dinner and uh, and, that's right. and you know behave you. in society. White How dare you? Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Privilege. Yeah, that's right. All right. On behalf of Mike Lomas, Glenn, we go like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, uh, hit the bell if you're lo- uh, if you're watching on YouTube. Our website, the Financial Guys. Dot com. And don't forget uh, anything when it comes to you and your money. If you think like us, use our team as a resource. Whether it's Medicare planning, we have AHIP certified independent Medicare experts. Home and Auto, we have over 25 different companies that we could shop to save you money. Chartered financial analysts, certified financial planners. We are a one-stop financial shop. Use us as a resource. God bless. We'll see you next week.